Hey econ students, if you've clicked on this video, that means you already know how to calculate opportunity cost and how to use one of these charts to figure out which country has a comparative advantage. If you don't know how to do that, go back and watch one of my practice videos because in this video, we're gonna cover the hands down, hardest, most difficult thing in unit one, terms of trade. The concept here is really simple. Countries can decide to produce things themselves or they can specialize in a few things and trade with other countries. But countries are only gonna trade if they can get something else at a lower opportunity cost than if they produced it themselves. So here's a question for you. If Italy can produce 10 cars or 30 trucks, would they be willing to import cars from Germany if they can trade one car for five trucks? I'll give you a little bit of time, but if you need to, pause the video and try to figure it out. Now, before I answer the question, let's set some ground rules. Number one, disregard any transaction costs. Obviously, it costs money to transport cars over the Alps. Just ignore that. Also, ignore anything that has to do with politics or trade barriers. For example, if Germany and Italy aren't getting along or there's a tariff, that's not part of this. Remember, this is not realistic. Countries don't specialize in producing only one thing. They definitely don't barter to other countries at a set terms of trade. All that said, the answer to the question is no. Italy would not accept those terms of trade. I must say no to you. And I'll give you my reasons. The first thing you have to do is calculate per unit opportunity cost. So yes, we know it's 10 cars for 30 trucks. So each one car costs three trucks for Italy. That's the opportunity cost if Italy produces cars themselves. Now you compare that to the terms of trade, one car for five trucks. What this is saying is if Italy decides to produce cars themselves, it's gonna cost them three trucks they can't produce. So their opportunity cost is three. If they trade, it's gonna cost them five. They have to give up five trucks to get one car. It's a bad deal, they're not gonna take it. Just remember what I said earlier. Countries are only gonna trade if they can get something else at a lower opportunity cost than if they produced it themselves. It's not personal, Sonny. It's strictly business. So if the terms of trade were different and it was one car for two trucks, then Italy would go for it. With trade, they could import a car from Germany and it only cost them two trucks. Instead of producing themselves, it would cost three trucks. One more time, countries are only gonna trade if they can get something else at a lower opportunity cost than if they produced it themselves. Does that kind of make sense? You get it? Got it, good. If you kind of get it, that's great, but now it's time to practice. Let's assume there's two countries, China and India, and with the same number of resources, they can produce TVs and phones. Here is the opportunity cost from producing each good, and you can see that China has a comparative advantage in TVs, and India has a comparative advantage in phones. So if they decided to trade, China is gonna specialize in the TVs, so they want phones, so India is gonna make the phones, and they want TVs. And that information is the key. Now you know which country wants what, and you have their opportunity cost, you're just doing what we did earlier, figuring out if the terms of trade make sense. So here's four different terms of trade. Your job is to figure out if they're acceptable to China and or India. So for each one, the answers are yes, or no. Right now, pause the video and see if each terms of trade is beneficial to each country. Okay, how'd you do? You did awesome? Let's go over the answers. The first thing I would do for all of them is convert it so I can see how much I'm trading one TV for and one phone for. So one TV for four phones is the same as one phone for one fourth a TV. Next, look at what each country wants and what's their opportunity cost if they produce it themselves. We know that China wants the phones and if they produce it themselves, it costs one half a TV. But at this terms of trade, they can get one phone and only give up one fourth a TV, right? They can trade one fourth a TV and get a phone, which is a better deal, a lower opportunity cost for China. So yes, this is beneficial for China. They would agree to those terms of trade. And we do the same thing now for India. India wants those TVs. If they produce those TVs on their own, it's gonna cost them five phones, but if they trade, it's only gonna cost them four phones. So yes, India would also go for this, so this is a mutually beneficial terms of trade. Both countries benefit and can get each product at a lower opportunity cost than if they produce it themselves. Wow. Now all you gotta do is the same thing over again for every single one of these. Again, start with China, they want those phones. If they produce phones themselves, it costs one half a TV, but if they trade, it's gonna cost one TV, which is bad, right? I'm not gonna give you one TV if it only costs me a half a TV to get the phones. So no, this terms of trade is not beneficial for China. And India wants TVs. If they produce it themselves, it costs five phones given up, but if they trade, it's only gonna cost one phone to get a TV. So this is a great deal for India. They can get those TVs at a lower opportunity cost than if they produce it themselves. But it's not a good deal for China, so this is not a mutually beneficial terms of trade. Here we go for number three, China wants those phones. If they produce it themselves, it's gonna cost one half a TV. If they trade, each phone's gonna cost one third a TV, which is a lower opportunity cost, 
China will benefit from that terms of trade. On the other side, India wants TVs. If they produce it themselves, it's going to cost five phones, but they can trade three phones and get a TV. This is a good deal for India. So in this case, both India and China can get the goods they want at a lower opportunity cost. This is a mutually beneficial terms of trade. Okay, last one, number four, same thing. China wants those phones. If they make them themselves, it's gonna cost one half a TV, or they can trade and it's only gonna cost one sixth of a TV. This is a good deal for China. They can get those phones at a lower opportunity cost. And on the other side, India wants TVs. If they trade, it's gonna cost six phones to get one TV, but it makes more sense to give up only five phones and get a TV, so this is not a good trade for India. They might as well make it themselves because they can produce it at a lower opportunity cost. Now, I know I went over that really quickly. If you need to, go back, rewatch it over again. Make sure you can figure out if each country benefits from trade. Now, if you understand how to do this, that's awesome, but you're likely not gonna be asked questions like this on your exam. Instead, you're more likely to get questions that say, identify a terms of trade that would benefit both countries. So you're gonna have to come up with the number. To get that, just remember what I taught you in my hacks video. Pick any number between these two numbers and it's gonna work every single time. So one TV for three phones is mutually beneficial and it works for both countries. Now, if you like these videos and you need more practice, go take a look at the ultimate review packet. You can start for free, just follow the link below. And if you're a teacher, take a look at my worksheets. I just uploaded a new worksheet covering terms of trade that you can use with your students. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.